Greetings, folks! The man here, and finally we are doing the tutorial for the fourth and final biome, the fourth, the fifth and the final biome for Alex's Caves, which is going to be the Forlorn Hallows. Oh, scary bad stuff. The Forlorn Hallows are a creepy place. The cave is the darkest out of any other biome, and yeah, it is super duper creepy. Also, the stone variant for this biome is guano stone. Guano is bat turds. So, yeah. Just keep that in mind when you're building your house. That's all I'm gonna say. Some of this stuff has also hardened into a different kind of rock called coprolith. And you'll find this stuff around the cave as well. Along with like these blocks with beady eyes looking at you. They are always watching. You will also find something called thornwood trees growing all around the caves. Or at least what's left of them. Also, here in the introduction, the book warns us to not light up the place. Because as it says, and I'm quoting the book here, All animals that live in the Forlorn Hallows have been twisted by dark influences, but some have been subjected to even darker powers. Even now, some beings there call forth even darker brethren from otherworldly shadows. So now let's find out what is actually going on in the Forlorn Hallows. Now that I've properly said the atmosphere, let's get back into the bad turds. <laughs> guano stone can be crafted into fertilizer using bone meal. This stuff is way more powerful and also required in order to craft the thornwood saplings because you need to craft them using branches. They just don't drop off the trees because the trees are dead. Also in the Forlorn Hallows, Redstone spawns at deeper depths than anywhere else, so yeah, more redstone, so people who are smarter than me can do their thing. Okay, now let's talk about the mobs. The first is the glow moth, or the glue moth, I don't know, there's no W when there's two O's. The glow moth is what I'm gonna call it though, is a passive little insect fluttering about the caves. If you place down a torch or any light source, the moth will gather towards it, just like normal moths would. But the problem is, even though the moths themselves aren't hostile, they attract their predators because the crazy bats that live in the cave eat them. So if you place a torch, that will bring in the moths, which will bring in the bats, which are a bigger problem. If you take one of these things out, you will get some moth dust. Okay, now let me talk about the main inhabitants of the Forlorn Hallows. The Underzealots are creepy cultist mole people who practice some kind of dark magic okay these little guys are afraid of light and so won't go near it you will almost always find these guys in groups and they fight in a very annoying way where if you hit them they dig down into the ground and appear somewhere else first of their creepy little experiments is if they find the glow moth flying low they will chase after it and catch it and if there's at least three of them, they will start performing this, like, Lovecraftian ritual. And this is some creepy goddamn stuff. The book says, An eminence of dark otherworldly power will briefly appear in this realm. What does that even mean? If you told me that, if you told me, hey, you know, a dark eminence of otherworldly power is gonna appear, I would lose my mind go, what is happening? What is appearing in this realm? Basically what they're doing is they're turning the moth into a different mob. They're turning into a monster. Before we talk about this guy though, if you manage to destroy these nasty little mole people, you will get some dark tatters and as a rare drop you can get the desolate dagger, which is a new weapon. The mob that the glow moth turned into was a watcher. The watcher is an extremely creepy being. The way this thing fights is horrifying. You're in the cave and one of these things spots you. What they do is they start closing in on you, and as they do that, they will like do some brain stuff, which will make you see the world from their eyes, as you see this like bloodshot creature coming at your like helpless body basically, because you wouldn't be able to move while they're doing this. And then, as they're attacking you, they fly and they switch back and f they switch your brain back and forth from your body to theirs and just make it very difficult to fight them. After all of that, if you manage to take one of these things out, you can get some dark tatters and occasionally they will drop occult gems. 
Corodents, they can be scary, but at least they're not the result of otherworldly powers briefly entering our realm. Okay, they're just big rats. They burrow through the walls of the caves and basically can burrow through any block. And they're difficult to fight because they can very easily get out of the way of your attacks. But also, they're deathly afraid of light. So if you just place down a torch, a corodent will just kind of sheepishly start backing away, at which point it becomes easy to fight them. And after you've won that fight, you can get yourself some Karodan teeth. The Wespar are the giant bats that I've been talking about. They're the ones who prey on those Glomots. Usually, they'll just be on the roof of the cave hanging out upside down, as bats do. But if you attack them, they will swoop in and out of the darkness, flying and dealing you a great bit of damage. But if you stick a big old shield in their way, they're gonna get grounded and pounded because you will be like beating them up <laughs> and after you've beaten them up you can get a Wespar wing but the problem is you aren't the only one fighting these things the underzealots are also on the hunt for these guys because they will also grab them and use them for another ritual the creature that gets created after the underzealots have used up a Wespar is a true monster this is the forsaken it is a bat the size of a rhino these things are terrifying, will attack almost anything, and they have been given a variety of attacks. They can grab you and pick you up for a bite, they can smash up the ground with their like upper arms, they can emit a sonic wave. As you fight this monster and bring it down to lower healths, it will showcase its true power I guess, and enter like this shadowy state where it becomes pitch black except for its glowing red eyes and it will begin to rapidly heal as long as it's in pitch darkness. After you have finally beaten this thing, you can get your hands on some pure darkness. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the utilities for a second. Moth dust can be thrown uh, at any mob and this mob will become scent marked as a moth so anything that doesn't like moths will just immediately start beating this thing up. You can also use moth dust to craft moth balls, which will keep moths away from light sources so that you can actually build down there. The desolate dagger attacks in an interesting way, where the initial attack doesn't deal much damage, but then another like ghostly version of the dagger will appear above your victim's head and will do more damage. Occult gems and the other stuff you see on screen can be used to craft totems of possession, which when you hit a creature will be bound to them and then you'll be able to use these things to control their movements basically. Wherever you look, they will go. And if you use this power to make them bump into each other, they will fight each other. Occult gems can also be crafted into the Beholder, which is a magical security camera. You can place this thing down anywhere and you can click it with another occult gem, at which point the occult gem that you have kind of becomes like that little Five Nights at Freddy's tablet with which you can like observe through the eyes of this camera, which is pretty cool. Corrodent teeth can be crafted into burrowing arrows, which when shot at a wall will start digging into it very interesting mining tool if you have enough of these. They can dig through five blocks in one go. Pure darkness can be turned into shadow silk, which is a new material that you can craft with. You can make something called the dread bow with it, which is a new weapon. If you shoot something with the dread bow, more ghost arrows will form and also hit them. Looks pretty cool. The silk can also be used to craft something called the hood of darkness and the cloak of darkness. If you put both of these things on, you will see like a little loading bar appear on your screen. And when it's full, you can go into this like crazy shadow mode. When you're in this state, you will have enhanced speed, more strength. You'll just be way stronger and faster. But the thing is, this effect is pretty short. So you can craft something called shadow apples in order to extend this effect. And that is it. That is really it. That is all five biomes covered. I'm finally free, you guys. Oh my god, it's so much stuff has happened. I haven't uploaded in so freaking long. And I've, I've been saying that for every video for like a month. And it's awful, but I can finally get back. to just making normal videos, just having fun. Finally doing that goddamn stream that I've been talking about so much. 
And yeah, man, uh, sometime in the future, not like future as in like two weeks from now, future as in like a couple days, I will make one video. I'll just compile all the five tutorials together into like one big full tutorial for the entire mod. And that'll be up on the channel. And yeah, we will be doing some like fun, just like normal Minecraft mods videos, streams coming in. And also, I just want to thank you guys because I was gone for like 15 days and people are still watching. Like the channel didn't immediately perish, which uh, like kind of like makes my heart full, you know, it's like people enjoy this stuff, which is touching. On that note, guys, I hope you've liked, I hope you've commented. And I hope you have subscribed. And for now, a goodbye.